And Oklahoma also had a sluggish performance. It looked good going into the fourth quarter. They were up 21 points at home against Iowa State. A lot of the fans left that game early, and then Iowa State came back, almost won it. They had a two-point conversion that they didn't get. So Baylor and Oklahoma survive. And that's going to set up basically a playoff eliminator. Things going to take care of themselves this week because the loser of this game would be out of contention. Would you agree, Chip? Yeah, absolutely. I think that Baylor will still be able to get to the Big 12 championship game, but without a win against Oklahoma, then I don't think Baylor's going to have the kind of resume that would allow them to be one of the top one-loss teams. So for Baylor, it might be needing to beat Oklahoma twice to be able to get it into the college football playoff. And you're absolutely right for Oklahoma. If the Sooners were to lose here, I think picking up that second loss would knock them out of the college football playoff picture. This matchup is really tough for Oklahoma. I've kind of got some, some panic alarms going off. I believe the Sooners are gonna take care of business. But when you think about the way that Kansas State sort of dominated the control of the game, the pace of the game, they held on to the ball almost for 40 minutes of game time, Baylor is very methodical in the same way, and Baylor does a good job of running the ball. And I think that that is a place where if Oklahoma is not going to be able to get off the field on third down, similar to that Kansas State game, we might see another result like that Kansas State game where Baylor's just kind of able to play keep away. In that loss to the Wildcats, the Oklahoma offense still averaged about nine yards per play. They were mostly doing their job. But that is why it is so key for this Oklahoma defense after letting Iowa State back into the game last week, show up and have one of your best performances of the season, win on third down, put the ball in Jalen Hurts' hands as many times as possible, and the Sooners should be able to win this thing handily. But again, a lot of panic alarms about the matchup with the way that Baylor might be able to control this thing with their offense. To answer your initial question, Chris, when you look at you know uh, the loss for either one of these teams, if Oklahoma loses, we've never seen a two-loss champion of the conference still be able to make it into the college football playoffs. So that would eliminate them. And then for Baylor, you look at the strength of schedule. I, I just I think you don't get or you don't guarantee yourself a chance for it in the Big 12 right now with as weak as the conference looks as a whole, even at the top right now, unless they go undefeated. So this is crucial for Baylor, and they're going to have to win twice against Oklahoma, I think, in order to be a part of that conversation. But in regards to how the matchup and how it's going to work, to Chip's point, you know, this Baylor team has a quarterback in Charlie Brewer who doesn't turn over the football. He's actually turned, the, turned it over the second fewest times in regards to interceptions in the Big 12 this year. So he's a good decision maker, and he doesn't put his team in a bad spot. You've got Lovett, you've got Hasty running the football, and they do like to be a little bit methodical, take their time and eat up some of the clock. This is an approach that I think Oklahoma is going to have to take where they have to value every one of their possessions. So they can't afford to turn the football over on offense and on defense. They've really struggled to generate turnovers. They're actually 125th as far as interceptions. They've got to do something to, or excuse me, as far as turnovers gain. They've got to do something to generate some turnovers to give that offense more possessions. I mean, think about this. This offense right now is averaging 9.29 yards per play. That's almost two yards better than the second place team in Ohio State in the country. Almost two yards better per play. This is a legitimate challenge for any defense. If anyone in the Big 12 is up for it, it's going to be Matt Rule and what he comes up with, both offensively to limit their touches and defensively. But this one to me has all the makings of a shootout. I love the over in this game, and I also think this is one where we do see Alex Grinch's defense adjust. We do see them make some of the corrections and they figure out some of the issues they've had in the second half in games, giving up 24 points in the third quarter to Kansas State on the road. 21 points to Iowa State last week. who really had a chance to win that game, not converting on their two-point conversion. So this has to be a statement game for Lincoln Riley and Oklahoma if they want to be considered as part of the college football playoffs. So I think they win, and I think they win big. And it might be the first of two matchups between these two teams. Oklahoma minus 10. Brady likes Oklahoma in a blowout. Who the heck is Charlie Brewer? He's the quarterback for the Baylor Bears. He's not a big guy. He's about 6'1", 205 pounds. But look at him dart around. He can definitely play the position. You know, his grandfather and his dad, they were quarterbacks at the University of Texas, so it's kind of kind of runs in his family. Uh, he's thrown four interceptions this season, only four, but those have come in the last two games. So we'll see what happens. On the year, though, uh, 16 passing touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns. Listen, Jalen Hurts has put up incredible numbers, and I still think he has something to say for the Heisman race. But look out for Charlie Brewer. This is his chance to shine in a primetime affair against Oklahoma. I know everybody's talking about Hurts and Oklahoma. 
But remember the name of Charlie Brewer. Could be a big one on that, Saturday. That Oklahoma defense is looking at yeah. wins right now. And they're having a really hard time getting turnovers. I think they're 125th in the country, at least the interception. So it could be a good matchup for them. Even though Baylor is 13th, they're undefeated. They win out, win the Big 12 championship game, potential rematch with Oklahoma. What do you put their percent chance to make the college football playoff? Is it a shoe in? Personally, I believe it should be. It should be a 100%. If you go 13 and 0 in a Power Five, you should make the playoff. What do you guys think? I would tend to agree with yeah. that. However, I do think their non-conference scheduling is going to get held in front of them, and I, I do think they'll end up being on the outside looking in, yeah. even if they wow. were to go undefeated. And and granted, they're, they're getting that's two quality wins you're getting before the conference yeah. championship game, which we do assume would be a, a rematch versus Oklahoma. However, I still think in comparison to the other Power Five conference champions, they would get left out even though they're undefeated. It's a big if, but if you beat Oklahoma twice in a month and you knock off Texas as well, you go undefeated, it would be awfully hard to leave the Big 12 champion out with a 13-0 record. Wow. That uh, is you a got Clemson brutal with a 13-0 I mean, record. They mm. barely beat Rice. They only beat Rice by eight. And, that, and that's <laughs> what I'm saying. When you look at how this committee's already looking at Oregon, for example, they're giving them favoritism for just scheduling Auburn. And really that game, I think we'll all admit, Oregon controlled the majority of that game. I thought they mismanaged the time at the end of the fourth quarter pretty terribly to allow Auburn to the chance to win at the end, and they did. But already the committee is giving them the benefit of the doubt just for scheduling that game. And, and again, we're looking at the potential of an Oregon being a one-loss team, granted one loss, but still a much tougher non-conference schedule. The gentlemen, last time I checked, Baylor still undefeated, yet they move back a spot in the CFP rankings, right? This week, uh, they host Heisman hopeful Jalen Hurts and the Oklahoma Sooners. Oklahoma, a double-digit favorite on the road this weekend. Uh, Barrett, is this number kind of around where it's supposed to be? No, I think it should be smaller. Look, I, I, I'll take Baylor. I'll take them out right. I, I think there's this idea that Oklahoma is just this invincible juggernaut still. And even after the Iowa State game, it seems like people are still falling into that trap that that for whatever reason that Oklahoma is just this behemoth. But it really isn't. The defense is a liability. They lose man off of their defensive line this year. Now, he was a rotational player this year. He's a starter last year, but still an important piece of that puzzle. Trey Sermon is now out of the mix at running back a season-ending injury. And I don't think Jalen Hurts is all that he's cracked up to be. So when you combine that with a very aggressive, uh, very, I would say, risk of, ri risky uh, Baylor defense, they get after you, they take their chances. To me, I take Baylor. I think they'll win it outright, but I certainly will grab those points because you saw last week, especially at the end of that game, Jalen Hurts made some really sloppy mistakes, especially that last interception. He's been doing that the last couple of games, and I think that's the true Jalen Hurts. I think uh, maybe earlier in the season it was a little bit of fool's gold. So I think Baylor keeps the magic going. I think they take advantage of some injuries and maybe a little bit of an overrated Oklahoma team. I'll agree with Barrett that I don't think this year's Oklahoma team is as good as the team we saw the last two years. And I think Jalen Hurts has played a role in that simply because they're not as explosive through the passing game on offense that they had been with Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray. But this Oklahoma team is still a lot better than Baylor. I really liked Baylor coming into the season. They've exceeded my expectations. I did not think they would start off undefeated. I don't think anybody did. But while Oklahoma struggled last week against a good Iowa State team, and then we saw it lose a couple weeks ago to Kansas State, we can't overlook the fact that Baylor needed overtime last week to beat a pretty mediocre TCU squad, and the week before, it nearly lost to a bad West Virginia team. This Baylor team got off to a great start, but we've seen it fade in recent weeks, and this is an Oklahoma team that is more talented than anybody Baylor has faced to this point, and I don't think that they're going to be able to keep up with them. And then also, if you want to look at some trends, Baylor at home, 4-10 and 10 against the spread in its last 14 and the Bears covered last week against TCU, which is good news. But the next week, it's bad news because their last 12 covers, they're three and nine against the spread a week afterwards. So I think Oklahoma is going to win this game. I think the spread should be closer to 14 than 10.